Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how to get started with OBS in a super quick start guide that's going to show you how to get started with streaming or recording as quickly as possible. So one of the things that's been added to OBS over the last couple of years is a auto configuration wizard, which can help set you up with recording settings very quickly. So if you want to find the auto configuration wizard, you go up to the tools menu and you'll find auto configuration wizard here. And so if you go ahead and click on it, you'll have two options to either optimize for streaming or to optimize for recording. So if you plan to do any live streaming to YouTube or Twitch or similar services, then I would recommend that you choose optimized for streaming obviously but if you don't want to set obs up with a stream key or linking it to a twitch account yet then you could choose optimized for recording instead uh, let's go ahead and choose optimized for streaming right now so i can show how that works so on the next tab you can basically choose what your base canvas resolution is so generally speaking if you're going to be recording a game or screencasting then you're going to use the same base resolution as whatever your computer screen is running at in my case that's going to be 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels if you want to record at a lower output resolution you don't have to change it here because there's actually a setting for a scaled resolution where you can take the full resolution of your desktop and scale it down to a smaller resolution for your video uh, up in the settings menu so generally i'm just going to leave that alone for fps generally the default is going to be fine here if you're on a weaker pc and you want to just consistently record at 30 fps if anything above that would get you inconsistent frames then you can change this to just be consistently 30 fps if you want um, but generally on most pcs the default settings here are going to be fine so let's go ahead and move on next you can pick the streaming service that you want to use so this doesn't necessarily need to be the one that you're going to use immediately but it's just setting things up for later on so you can use youtube slash youtube gaming here but you can also select from the drop down list other common options such as twitch now if you want to set obs up to work with youtube then you're going to need to hit the get stream key which will go to youtube.com slash live dashboard. So if you go to this page and you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see encoder set up here. This is where you get the stream key. You have to hit reveal and then copy whatever is inside of here over to OBS. And then you'll just wanna go ahead and control V paste that in. So you can control C to copy and control V to paste if you don't already know that. Aside from that, the video bitrate uh, by default will be set to 2500. If you plan on streaming or recording at a resolution like 1920 by 1080 pixels, then 2500 is not really going to be that good. So you'll probably need to put this at a higher setting. Now note that when you're streaming, you also have to have internet upload speeds that are good enough for you to actually support that video bitrate. So there's an article I'm going to put in the description that you can kind of look through to get an idea of those recommended upload internet speeds. But generally speaking, your internet speed, I would say needs to be about 20 to 30% faster than the bitrate that you want to stream at. So you can see here for 1080, 60 FPS, it's recommending your 6.5 to eight or higher megabits per second. So a megabit is, of course, 1,000 kilobits per second. KBPS is a kilobit per second. So if you just take these and you multiply them by 1,000, that will get you the direct comparison to this bit rate down here. So for the recommended upload, they're saying that you should probably have 6,500 to 8,000 kilobits per second or higher if you want to stream at 4,500 to 6,000 kilobits per second. And generally, that kind of rough formula is going to apply at any of the resolutions. So if you have a weaker internet, you may unfortunately need to record at a lower resolution, such as 720p. So of course, if you upgrade to a better internet, as long as your computer is good enough to record at those higher settings, you should be good to go. So because I want to record and stream at 1080p resolution, I'm going to use 6000 kilobits per second here and putting that into my video bitrate. If you're not sure what your actual upload speed is, you can go to sites like speedtest.net and run the speed test here, which will give the upload speed in megabits per second. So once again, just times those by a thousand, compare that to the upload bit rate that you want. It should be at least 20, 30% higher, really, if you want it to be able to stream consistent. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and move on. When you get to the final results, you'll notice that the output scaled resolution is automatically set for you. Though if you want to scale that down, you can always do that in the file menu. So let's go ahead and apply here. 
And let's talk about a few more settings. So file, and then you go to settings. To show the scaled resolution, you can find that in video, output scaled resolution. So that can be there. If you wanted to make it scaled down to 720p, that would be 1080 by 720, which is basically gonna take your base resolution and it's gonna output to a smaller size. But you may not want that at all. In fact, in most cases, I would think you wouldn't want that unless it's necessary having more resolution and more detail is generally gonna just be better. So next up, you're going to want to set up your microphone. So to do that, go to the audio tab here and you'll see mic auxiliary audio. You'll need to select the device that's plugged into your computer that you want to be recording into. So by default, you might have something like microphone array. So my laptop has a built-in microphone, but it sucks. So you might need a USB microphone and you can select the device you want here and then go ahead and hit apply. And to know it's working, you're going to want to see in the audio mixer in the main interface where it says mic aux, it should be getting some levels as you talk into your microphone. Okay, so next up, I would recommend that you set your recording format to MKV and later you can remux to MP4, which is a highly compatible video format, uh, as in that many video editors do support MP4. It's probably one of the more common video formats out there right now. But if you wanna change the recording format that your computer is gonna be recording to, you go to output and you can set here in recording format MKV. So the reason we use MKV is twofold. Uh, first off, if your recording stops before you actually stop the recording, you won't lose all of the video information that has already been recorded to the output file. So basically if it stops abruptly, you don't lose everything. So secondly, MKV and MP4 formats support having multiple audio channels embedded into a single video file. Now, when you're streaming to the internet, it's gonna be one single audio channel. But if you record that to a file and you bring that into a video editor, you can have, let's say, the microphone audio and the game audio separate from each other so that it's much easier to edit them separately, maybe raise the volume on one while leaving the other a little quieter. So I won't get into exactly how to do that because that's a little more advanced here. But generally, it's a good idea to have the recording format here set to MKV. And then what you can do for video editor compatibility is you can go over to the advanced tab here and you can check automatically remux to mp4 so that when a video file is finished recording, OBS will automatically take it and convert it into an mp4 file, which will have better video editor compatibility if you're using things like Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, it should work fine. And in case you're wondering how to convert it manually, you can go up to the file menu and do remux recordings. Um, you pop in the recording on the left, and you set a target file with a target format over on the right and OBS can convert video files that you've already. Okay, so now at this point, OBS should pretty much be set up. We need to create a scene to record. Okay, so you can see in the background, I went ahead and opened up a game. This is Hearthstone. So if we want to create a scene that contains that game so that we can actually record it, uh, let's go ahead and do that now. So. A scene basically is gonna contain multiple sources. Sources would include things like a webcam, um, any screen overlays that you might have, the game you wanna record, or the desktop, or really any video source. So whenever we want a different setup, we create a new scene. So hit the plus button under scenes, and we can call this something like Redstone. And then in the sources, we can right click and go to add. In this case, a game capture would work pretty well. A uh, display capture will capture the entire screen of your desktop, which will include things like taskbars and that kind of thing. And then window captures will capture specific windows on your computer. So you could capture a web browser without capturing the entire desktop if you wanted to. Uh, game capture, obviously going to work pretty well for games in most cases. So we could do game capture and rename this Hearthstone. And we can rename this uh, Hearthstone Source. One of the limitations of OBS is that you can't have two things being the same name. So if I called this Hearthstone, it wouldn't actually work because the scene is also called Hearthstone. So they have to have different names for whatever reason. Um, so once you get over here, you can either have it capture any full screen application, but I tend to prefer to click on the drop down menu and choosing capture specific window. And then under window, we can select Hearthstone. Generally, most of these things we can uh, just set as default and then hit okay. 
So you might not see anything immediately. Uh, generally, Game Capture will pick up the source once you click on it once. So if I click into the game, and then we click back. In this case, it actually looks like it didn't pick up Hearthstone, which is actually good in this case, because I can show you another way. In the case that some games don't actually get picked up by Game Capture, you can use Window Capture instead. So I'm going to remove this Hearthstone source by clicking on the minus button. And I'll hit yes, and then we can go to sources, do add, and then window capture. So with window capture, we can call this Hearthstone window. Hit OK. And you need to select the window from the drop down. So in this case, Hearthstone. And you can see when we hit OK here that it actually picked up the source this time. So sometimes window capture will work in cases where game capture won't. And then if you have to, you can resort to display capture, which will just pick up everything on the screen as well. So just to point out a couple more sources that many people kind of want to use, um, if you right click and go to add, if you want a screen overlay, basically has parts of the screen that will have extra graphics on it, while most of it is transparent to let the background game show through, you can go to add image, a screen overlay should be a PNG image generally because PNG allows transparency. And then if you want to add a webcam, a video capture device is the way to go. You just pick the webcam and you scale it to the corner of the screen that you want. So speaking of scaling, when you have any source added to OBS, uh, you can actually resize and adjust the position of it inside of your main video frame. So here you can see I added the OBS logo in giant format to the sources for the scene. You can see if I left click on it, I can drag it around. It has auto snapping to the corners. And if I want to scale it, you can click on any of these uh, square rectangles and pull them inwards. So if I just keep scaling it a little bit, I'd be able to get it sized onto the scene more appropriately. And I can position that basically wherever I want it to be. So I can pop that up there if I so desire and put that in the top right hand corner. And that same idea would apply to a webcam as well. So that's basically the idea of how you add in sources and set up a scene. So uh, one last thing, if you wanna start and stop your recording, then you can do that over on the right with the start streaming and start recording button. Note that you can have both of them running at the same time. So you can be recording to a video file at the same time that you're streaming to a service like Twitch or YouTube. You would just have both of these um, on the start mode by clicking on both of those at the same time. Uh, one other thing that you can do is add hotkeys for starting and stop so that you don't have to open up the OBS window whenever you want to start or stop your recording. You can actually go to File and then Settings. And then there's a tab here called Hotkeys where you can set a Start and Stop Recording Hotkey or a Start and Stop Streaming Hotkey. So in my case, I like using Control alt r It's a combination that's hard to press without being intentional about it. So you can use that to start and stop your recording without actually popping open the OBS window. So in any case, I find that pretty useful. You can set any hotkeys for a bunch of other stuff here if you so desire but I'll leave the rest as default for now. So that is pretty much it for a quick start guide into OBS. I hope that everything was easy to follow for you guys and that you guys learned a lot about the basics of using OBS. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my future video content.